Once Upon a Snowman is the latest original short film to hit the Disney Plus streaming service from Walt Disney Animation. Set during the timeline of the first Frozen film, Once Upon a Snowman tells the previously untold origins of Olaf the Snowman. Thanks to my friends over at Disney, I was given the opportunity to chat with the film's core creative team from Walt Disney Animation Studios, including writer-director team Trent Corey and Dan Abram, head animator Becky Brissy, and producer and creative consultant Peter Del Vecco, ahead of the short film's launch on October 23 on the Disney Plus streaming service. I'm uh, calling from Australia this morning uh, from YouTube channel Dave Lee Down Under. It's a real pleasure to uh, be able to speak to you. Um, Firstly, yeah. con congratulations on the success of Frozen 2 and uh, absolutely gorgeous movie. I really loved it. And Once Upon a Snowman is such a beautiful little companion piece to the franchise. I really enjoy, uh, I really adored it. Um, My name's Trent Corey, and I was uh, animation supervisor of Olaf, Gale, and Bruni in Frozen 2. And I was lucky enough to pitch and co-direct and co-write uh, Once Upon a Snowman with Dan Abraham. I'm Dan Abraham, and I co-directed uh, Once Upon a Snowman with Trent after I was finished storyboarding on Frozen 2. Yeah, and I'm Peter Del Vecco, and I was the producer on both the Frozen movies as well as, as the short. And, you know, it's, it's the same. It's, it's understanding the vision of the directors and helping them pull the team together, which is easy because really we took the whole team that made Frozen 2, or a good portion of the team that made Frozen 2, and they went on to make the short. So yeah. that part of the, the job uh, was, was pretty straightforward. I was head of animation, um, and that is it's pretty much what Peter does too, which is trying to get the director's vision up to the big screen. That's the overview of it, really. Yeah, and it's, it's really just looking after um, the characters and making sure that um, all of the characters are looking and acting like themselves throughout. For, for you, Peter, um, you are both a producer and a creative consultant on the film. And as you said, you've been involved with the franchise since the beginning. Um, what does the creative consultant part of the job entail on a project like this one that's so Im embedded in an established franchise? Well, I, I think it, it is exactly that. It is is making sure that, that we're adhering to the rules of the world, yeah. uh, who these characters are, um, uh, to, you know, and... and Jennifer Lee and Chris were also involved and particularly Jennifer and overseeing, you know, the development of the story. And again, we yeah. want to make sure that we're telling stories that are at the highest quality, both technically and, and just as stories themselves. So. Yeah. So Trent, I guess we'll, we'll start with the inception, the genesis of this idea. Uh, where did, where did this idea come from? And uh, how did you, how did you pitch it to the studio? Yeah, sure, Dave. Yeah. This idea goes, goes way back to 2012. I started at Disney as a trainee uh, in a mentoring program, and my first job was on Frozen, the very first movie, which is a crazy film to start on. Uh, yeah. That successful and, and that fun to work on. So, um, And I actually started animating when uh, Let It Go was being done in our department, and I remember hearing the song, and I saw one of the animators, Chad Sellers, you know, submit a scene, and it's Elsa making Ola. And she makes a laugh, and then she just keeps walking, and she's singing, and we, we go along with her. She sings Let It Go and builds the ice castle. But when I saw that shot, I thought, what? She just created life for the first time, and now we don't see Olaf for another 20 minutes of film. I want to know what happens next. And, you know, I have a love of, like, Bambi and Pinocchio, um, those moments of characters, like, discovering themselves, who they are, how they move. And I just thought there was a lot of fun to be had in that. So, you know, the incarnation of this idea was in 2012, 13. And then over the years, I just kind of slowly chipped away at it. And it's really um, the Disney Plus partnership that we have that kind of created an opportunity for us to make this short. And Jennifer Lee, um, you know, uh, kind of said, go with it, make it. And, and she uh, introduced Dan and I to work on it together. Amazing. So that's how you, you became involved, Dan? You were just sort of... Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Lee asked me if I would come on board and, and help Trent uh, figure out the story and, and co-direct with him and go on this journey. And we had a great time. Amazing. Where, how do you, where do you start writing something like this, particularly um, something that's so imbued in an in a established franchise, there's previous lore, 
Do you start with the story idea? Do you start with gags? Yeah, the very start um, was in the pitch. It was, you know, I, I'd done maybe maybe 20 beat boards of scenarios. They were, you know, what if we started Jerry and Let It Go? What if we got to Oaken's cabin? What if he tried on some noses? Uh, what if he, you know, um, was chased by wolves and to the ending? So I, I kind of had the basic foundations. But then when Dan came on board, um, I just kind of said, here's where we're at. Um, go away for a week and just do your thing. You know, what would you do differently? What would you do the same? And uh, I'll let Dan take it from here. I mean, Trent had Trent had such a good foundation for uh, a story and and uh, such a great a bunch of gags and moments and all that stuff. So I just think then and and some, move some things around and then just brought them, you know, presented them back to him to see, you know, if, if I was what he thought and if, if, if uh, I had just made it different or if I had made it better or, you know, whatever the case may be. And I think just the two of us bouncing ideas back and forth like that um, really brought it to a place that everyone really reacted well to. Yeah. Do you find it um, easier or harder or is it kind of the same to work within a previously established franchise as opposed to something that's um, completely new, completely fresh? Well, there's, I think there's, there's definitely things you can lean on. Uh, like we did have that foundation. We knew we had to stay within those moments and, and we know the character like Dan and I and the crew that worked on this and Josh Gad, you know, everybody involved. We, we've worked on this character for eight years and, for us, it's a joy to revisit. You know, we just love animating a love, um, storyboarding a love, and Josh Gad, obviously, um, voicing a love. And Becky, you've been involved uh, with the Frozen franchise from the beginning as well um, in various animation roles. How has your role expanded throughout the, the series of films and, and shorts? Well, on the first Frozen, I was the animation supervisor of Mama. So that really is um, a group of people from all different departments coming together to build the characters. Um, and so it was it was more of once we got into production, it was more making sure um, I'm keeping care of Anna and that she looks and acts like herself throughout the movie. Yeah. Um, you know, we had, I think on the first version, Peter, correct me if I'm right here, was about 75 animators, I think. Right. Sounds about right, yeah. And so... My job as an animation supervisor was to help make sure that it felt more like one person was animating, um, uh-huh. like keeping the person consistent as well. As far as head of animation, it was broader in that I was part of a, a small team of um, heads of departments and we were collaborating, overseeing more of the movie than just my character. So it's overseeing a little bit more of our team, um, creating a team um, to look after the characters really just trying to get the directors as much as they can. What's the, what's the difference in, um, I, I guess, in, in your, your process in creating for a feature film, a theatrical film, as, as opposed to a short film? Is it the same or, are you, or is there kind of a different ways that you go about doing? Well, it, it, much of it is the same. I mean, it, it's, we know these characters well, we know these worlds well, so that part is the same. What is easier is we're not, inventing new worlds and new characters and what's easier is you know with a, a short depending on you know it can be seven ten minutes long uh so the arc of the story is much easier when you're talking about an hour and a half or more for a film um everything is interwoven so so really uh the, the story takes longer to um uh develop so yeah. the advantage of a short is usually you can lock the creative ahead of trying to animate the short. So therefore it makes the whole production process uh, go a lot quicker, a lot smoother. How, what's the, what's the time frame for a project like this? Obviously a feature film can take years in product, years and years in production. A short film like this, are you, I, I'm assuming you're under a much more constricted time frame to kind of, to get all the work done. Yeah. I, I came on um, uh, June of 2019 and our wrap party was in January or February of this year. So I, for me, it was about six months, but that's because we were able to build off of what Trent had already, you know, sort of done with his sketches and his little notes and things about what this thing could be. Um, 
And so we had such a good foundation that we were off and running like right away starting in June. And um, yeah, it was, it was, it was really quick and we, we hit very little hurdles along the way. Like we had stuff to figure out for sure, yeah. but this was one of the easier projects I've ever been on. That's, that's amazing. Sure. Well, and this is, I mean, you heard it started in 2012, but technically <laughs> eight years. Technically we did about a minute uh, a year, but uh, yeah. You weren't working on it every year for, <laughs> come on. Tires, please. Um, I'm continually awed by how much more incredible your animation gets with each passing film. Each time I kind of think it's hit, it's hit its peak. CG animation has hit its peak. You just find new ways to just absolutely awe me. Uh, Frozen 2 was absolutely <laughs> stunning. I've, I've been on record in the past saying I think it's some of the most gorgeous CG animation I've ever seen. Incredible. Traditionally, short films have been used to, I guess, experiment with technologies and techniques and help refine artist craft. Walt Disney did it with the Silly Symphonies. The early Pixar shorts essentially were used to create CG animation. Do you still find short films a great outlet to be able to experiment and refine the craft? Or is it just at this stage kind of about getting in there and, and having fun? You know what? I, yeah, I think you can do both. I think on this one, we know the characters, we know the world, um, it is established. And so we can have more, we can have fun with the animation and pushing into that. But we do have also short circuits at the studio where we can be more inventive and try different things. And, um, always, we're always, it's in our DNA to push things further with everything we do, whether it be in the animation or the look of it or, um, you know, the style. Uh, it's just kind of what we do at the studio. So we're always looking to, to be better and push ourselves. And I think it's part of the passion of our craft, um, that allows us to do that. So this, this one here, Once Upon a Snowman, is of course set during the first film. Um, and it places Olaf in scenes that he wasn't in during that film. So were you able to, sorry if I sound a bit ignorant, but were you able to go back to kind of like the original animation files from the first film or is everything just completely from scratch? Well, because um, because time has gone, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of time yeah. that's being frozen and so there were some things that um, animation-wise we had to do just because the rigs had changed so much. Yeah. Um, for instance, the scene where Kristoff and Anna and fled and she's saying, um, you have friends that are love experts, you know, that sort of thing. We had to have an animator go in and kind of recreate that scene because we just, we didn't have that information anymore. Um, so there were things like that that technically were challenging that we had to kind of do on. For Trent and Dan, this is the first time both of you have like taken the reins on a Frozen project. You've both been involved in the previous films in various um, uh, capacities. What's that transition like, um, going from various other roles to, again, just taking the reins of, of a short like this? You know, it was pretty amazing. i got to say that I, I, I have done a short circuit at the studio, and Dan has directing experience too at Disney Toon. Uh, so we both have experience directing, but in terms of the Frozen franchise, like we said, the team, you know, a lot of our team worked on the first two Frozen movies mm-hmm. and some of the short uh, properties. And then we had Jen, uh, Jennifer Lee, Chris Buck, and Peter Dalbecco to kind of lean on. Um, and Becky, you know, um, head of animation. So we had a lot of people to lean on. But I got to say that um, doing this with Dan, uh, doing a partnership co-directing, uh, was really fun because we got to bounce ideas around. And it does take the pressure off a little bit because we're just – you know, we can bounce ideas around and just have a good time making it. Pretty amazing at Disney, uh, the support that you get and from, from every department and from every person there and how everybody wants you to succeed. Mm. And so everybody brings their know-how and their, their and, and they just support you. And they and if you have a question, they answer the question for you and they guide you and, and they believe in you and trust you. I mean, you know, the fact that we we're asked to direct this, like, it's like, okay, well, they're the directors. Like Jennifer Lee obviously saw something in them to make, make this happen. So people rallied around and they were, yeah, they, it was, it's, it's overwhelmingly wonderful, really. So this was obviously developed specifically for Disney plus. Does that change the way that you approach the work or is it business as usual? Exactly the same. You know, it didn't, it didn't really change anything, actually. If anything, it does give us a little bit of room to play with the, the time format. You know, we, 
because it's streaming and it's not playing theatrically or on a DVD where there's time restrictions, yeah. we were kind of given free reign. So, um, so we just, we made the short we wanted to make and we had all the same talents and tools and technology um, working on this that would have worked on the features. So really it, it's just part of the same process. Well, I, I think uh, what's great about Disney Plus is it gives us opportunity to tell stories. You know, it gives us a, a, a you know an opportunity. Um, I would say our approach to the short, whether this was released on Disney Plus or released you know theatrically, our our effort on the short, our quality on the short is going to remain the same yeah. in in either case. Yeah, I think that's great. I think especially with all the content that has come out of Disney Plus, there is no distinguishable uh, distinguishable difference between something you would see on the big screen. Or on the small screen, and I think you've got to commend the teams of people working on these on these films, and even Disney for being able to to kind of back. You know, in the past, there's been you can there's a, there's a distinguishable difference between something produced for television and something produced for uh, for cinemas. I mean, yeah. again, big commendations for being able to you know produce stuff to the highest quality for this format. I think it's great. Do you do you think it opens more opportunities for you? at uh, Disney Animation uh, in the kinds of projects that you can um, go forward with in the future? Yeah, there's no question that it'll create opportunities within our own studio to tell more stories because we were still continuing to make our big feature tentpole films. Uh, But Disney Plus also gives an opportunity to tell other stories. Or um, uh, So, yeah, I think for us it's very exciting. I love the the documentary on the the behind-the-scenes of Frozen 2. It was very, I, I thought it was very um, raw and very just, um, you know, honest. And you don't, you don't mm-hmm. kind of often see that. And I, I just kind of love to see that behind the scenes glimpse of, of that, um, the making of that film. Did you find going into the short film straight after the big one, did it feel like part of the same kind of process or is it like a little bit of a breather? You can kind of step back and... Well, I, I looked at it as another opportunity to revisit more characters because you don't often get to do that when a movie ends and we're all kind of excited about the characters all the way up to the end and you're running, you're running, you're running and usually you just stop. And then you have to say goodbye and they're like, no, wait a minute, where'd you go? You know? Yeah. And so what was nice is that instead of running and stopping, we got to just hop onto this next project and continue our team with Olaf. And that's a really special thing um, that I'm kind of done. As long as been- as, as long as we've got Josh Gad in our corner, we're, we're golden. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's fantastic in this. What's it like um, working with him? I, I know there's a lot of um, improvisation and all that kind of stuff. How how far did he kind of veer from your original script? He's very very sweet to work with. He um, you know he comes into the booth, gives everyone a hug, a oh, nice warm hug, Olaf style. And uh, it's the hardest part about being in the booth with him was not laughing, uh, mm-hmm. really, and. And I got to say, just to Josh as a person, you know, he comes by our animation department. He he came to our rap party. He he's there for us. He understands the process, and he enjoys the collaborative nature of it. So, what a great guy to work with. Yeah, he um, you know, he he gets the script and he uh says the lines and all that, but then he'll just start riffing and he'll say the essence of the line or he'll lengthen the line or he'll change a word or whatever. And he just goes and goes and goes and goes until he stops. Yeah. And then you've got so much gold to choose from that you have to be like, Oh, what do we do here? Like there's so much to work with. Like it's, it's, it's the pleasure. It's just, it, and it, and yeah, that's right. You just have to not laugh so you don't screw up his take. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, look guys, thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it today. Uh, once again, the short was fantastic. Really loved it. Thanks again. Once Upon a Snowman is an absolutely wonderful little short film filled with all the heart, humour, soul and warmth that you would expect from any Frozen property. Thanks once again to my friends over at Disney for organising this incredible opportunity to chat with the incredibly talented team from over at Walt Disney Animation Studios. You can of course catch Once Upon a Snowman on the Disney Plus streaming service when it launches on October 23rd, 2020. Thanks once again to everybody involved and thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Hey everyone, if you haven't yet, smash that big old subscribe button up on your screen to keep up to date with all my content and hit that like button down below. Also, don't forget to check me out on social media and please consider supporting me over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month for exclusive videos, early access content and to get your name up on the screen. Thanks again for watching.